Ladakh, the land of high passes, a motorcyclist's dream. Hell, it was my dream. You can only enjoy riding a motorcycle to a certain point until you want to ride through foreign lands, through the unknown, through a place that is visually mind-blowing. I've always ridden motorcycles. At this point, I owned a Kawasaki Ninja ZX6R super sports bike, which is, if you don't know, a really fast bike. But I had never ridden a dual-purpose bike or gone on any long adventure rides. For me, a 27-year-old motorcycle rider from Sydney, it was my obsession with nature, motorcycles and adventure that made me catch the flight from Sydney to Ley in Ladakh in June 2016. I spent a whole month travelling Ladakh in June and absolutely loved every moment of it. I loved it so much that I had to return in November when tourist season was finished and due to this I could experience Ladakh in its primal beauty, absolute solitude. So sit back, relax and let me take you through Ladakh on my motorcycle. Let me show you the pristine beauty of Ladakh. You'll be with me every step of the journey through my trials and triumphs as I travel all over this beautiful place. Everything you will see in this film was shot, edited and done by me. I put 110% effort into making this and all I ask is that you enjoy it. I had my travel backpack laden with almost 10 kilograms of camera gear, including my DSLR camera, my drone, action camera and tripods. I also had packed about 5 kilograms of camping gear and a further 5 kilograms of clothing and accessories. I packed more cameras than I did clothes. Oh yeah, I'm such a dumbass. I've locked the suitcase, but I've left the keys at home. There was a big problem though. Look at how I'm walking. Correction, limping. I had been diagnosed with having an inguinal hernia about a year ago, which was only getting worse. During my flight from Sydney to Delhi, the hernia had bulged out and to be brutally honest, putting a painful amount of pressure onto my testicles from the inside of my abdomen. If you don't know what a hernia is, don't stress. It's basically when your intestines crush your nuts. So imagine riding a motorcycle with that sensation, not very pleasant at all. But I wasn't going to let a hernia stop me from doing what I love. I was going to limp my way around Ladakh if I had to. At about 7.30 in the morning, I landed at the military airport in Leh, Ladakh. And let me just say, I was damn excited to return to familiar ground. The plan was to grab my motorcycle and ride for the next two weeks to places like Saw Moriri, Nubra Valley, over the world's highest road, Kadungla Pass, Pangong Lake and Lama Yuru, which is also known as the Moonland of Ladakh. On the 27th of October 2016, I landed in Lei. I was picked up by friends I had made on the previous trip, Jimmy and Bovin, who were good friends of Tundup. Let's go, man. I can't believe you came. Oh my god, Jimmy! Oh. Jimmy! That is my we'll friend, Jimmy. Oh my god, look at this. Hey, man. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, There's one, Doc. My best buddies came to pick me up. Tundup is the owner of the motorcycle hire company, Times Travel, and had helped me with getting a motorcycle in June. We became friends because of similar interests in motorcycles and music. Tundup had broken his leg in September after a truck collided into his motorcycle while he was travelling on the Lei to Manali Highway. He had to be driven in the car for seven hours with a broken leg to the nearest hospital on extremely bumpy roads. Hello, 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 hello. Hello. Oh my god! Hey man! How are you man? Oh my god, Tunde! You're good? The legend! <laughs> <laughs> Let me see! 
we see that broken leg? Yeah, here's the legend leg. <laughs> oh no. Oh uh, no. This one. Man. Oh yeah, man. Man. We just woke up. <laughs> <laughs> man, honestly, you look f weird. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm so weak after the hernia. I got another yeah, hernia, yeah, so yeah. yeah. Is it not the same band that yeah, yeah. we had last time? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah man. They're my favorite band. That's Jimmy's favorite tea. Yeah. It's called Ladaki Butter Tea. Butter Tea. And I think it tastes disgusting. <laughs> no, <that's laughs> it tastes disgusting. <laughs> oh, wow. There's my dog. Look at Jump. that. Oh, oh my god. Nice, nice. This was my motorcycle. A 2016 Royal Enfield Himalayan. A 411cc adventure bike. A purpose-built touring machine. It would take me all over Ladakh. I quickly decided to perform a test flight of my drone and check out the city of Leh from above. Okay man, I'll follow you guys. How are you guys getting out? You going that way? After landing, quickly visiting Tundup and insulting Tundup's favourite drink, Ladaki butter tea, I grabbed my motorcycle and we went to the village Nimmu to eat samosas. Life surely is a funny thing. You can meet strangers on the other side of the world and become close friends. While riding to Nimu, I felt as though I was on some strange and beautiful alien planet, consisting of clear blue rivers flowing amongst massive mountains. Second round of samosas. Yes. Second round. At this point, my hernia was hurting badly. I could feel throbbing pain on the right side of my nutsack. It's my first day in Leh, and I had to get a hotel room straight away because I'm so tired, and my hernia is killing me. So I'm just gonna relax for the rest of the day. It is now six, nearly six o'clock, 15 to six, and because it's almost winter, there's not much daytime around here. Anyway, I've got this guest house. I'm gonna go to bed, so I'll catch you tomorrow. season is out and it's like a ghost town around here. This is the main tourist strip in the city of Leh. Usually it is full of people and vehicles, but since it was outside of tourist season, I got the pleasure of having an isolated experience in Ladakh. Meet Otzel a fellow photographer and owner of Otzel Guest House. The hotel where I was staying at for the entire trip. The hotel would act as my base camp and storage place for the gear I didn't always need. Thank you. It was time to head out on my first mini trip. I decided to get acquainted with my favorite mountain food, Maggie noodles. But I wasn't the only one that wanted a piece of the Maggie noodles. Okay, let me eat this first. The animals in Ladakh are just as friendly as the people. I guess the positivity is contagious.
I reached Tixi Monastery which is only about 40 minutes drive from Leh. It is a 12 storey ancient monastery for Buddhists and it is situated on a hill within the village of Tixi. The monastery is not only visually compelling, but also has a practical purpose, a place of meditation for Buddhist monks. It is situated at an altitude of 3,600 meters and is the largest monastery in central Ladakh. Back at the hotel room, I recharged and packed my camera gear and headed to the next destination, Lama Yuru, the moonland of Ladakh. Lama Yuru is located some 120 kilometers west of Leh and is truly an exciting motorcycle ride with plenty of twisting roads. At this time of year, all of the trees take on their autumn colours, displaying an unbelievable contrast of orange against the blue rivers. Four hours later, I reached Moonland. The, the beauty of Moonland. Much like its name, it looks like terrain that you would find on the surface of the moon. The rocky mountains, the deep craters, and the high altitude all contribute to this moon-like environment. At the end of the valley stands Lama Yuru Monastery. It is known for being the oldest monastery in Ladakh, founded in the 11th century. Here's Lama Yuru Monastery, just at the top of that little mountain on the right. Looks great, doesn't it? Well, what looks even better is opposite Lama Yuru Monastery, the main feature. What you see before you is an immense 500 meter tall lump of mountainside craters.
I'm not limping because I ejaculated. No, I'm limping because at this point the hernia is crushing my nuts. But I had to carry it on anyway. Just pulled over on the side of the road, about 70 kilometers left until we reach Lay. And just look at these amazing colors, man. On the way back to Lay, I took a detour away from the main roads and discovered some crazy off-road terrain. It was great fun putting the off-road capabilities of my bike to the test. Among this desert-like and mountainous terrain, I felt like a child who could explore and do as he wished. I could go on any road I wanted, I could ride at any speed I wanted, and I could do as many burnouts as I wanted. That's it for my fourth day here. I hope you guys enjoyed Lama Yuru and Moonland. The next day I had prepared and was on my way to one of my favorite destinations, Pangong Lake. But sadly, there was a problem. So literally as I was pulling into this petrol station, I noticed that I couldn't downshift a gear and I looked down and what the fuck? The freaking gear pedal just came off, man. What the hell? Look at that. The fucking bolt just came out. Wow. So the guy at this petrol station found me a little bolt that I can fix in here. And um, I've been able to shift it into second gear and maybe just get it back to wherever the mechanic is. Won't be able to go to Pangong Lake today, sadly. It's turned up shop behind me. Look at that, another two Himalians in there. Yep. And I'm gonna steal, we're gonna steal the parts off one of the Himalians, aren't we? Yeah. The thing that's gonna fix my bike is in my hand right now. Can I get it? And with Jimmy's mechanical abilities and the saliva from his mouth, I was on my way without further delay. Currently heading to Pangong Lake. Only about 100 kilometers left. Pangong Lake is located some 150 kilometers from Lei, and although it doesn't sound like much, winding mountain roads, dirt tracks, blind corners, and having to ride over a 5,300 meter high pass makes it a very challenging ride. But it's the challenges that make it so fun. Motorcycling is at its best when you put yourself and the motorcycle to the test. This notorious winding road that starts from the valley down there leads to Changla Pass, a 5,360 meter high pass. I'm at about 5,000 meters height. That's Changla Pass, the top of Changla Pass. Yeah! Today, that's the restaurant from where you can usually get tea and stuff like that, but I don't think it's going to be open now, considering it's November. 5,360 meters!
so I'm just <laughs> I'm just riding along and I had to stop because if you haven't already seen it wow man you don't see that every day that is out of control a truck on its back like a turtle what the hell all right let's carry on the ride to Pangong Lake is a dream come true for a motorcycle rider. I thoroughly enjoyed riding the twisting roads endlessly. I faced a few challenges on the way with icy, slippery roads, but it was nothing a bit of determination couldn't handle. Stop! I'm stuck! Yes! And I'm out! Oh. oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, oh my god! to Pangong Lake. I'm gonna go down to that village and see if I can book myself into a homestay, get a place, a nice warm place to sleep for the night. I got this room for like, like 500 rupees all up, including dinner and breakfast, but the room smells like a dead cat. There's cats roaming all over the place and um, there's no electricity, so I can't charge my drone or any of my cameras. And my phone battery's dead, I'm completely isolated from the world. Even if my phone worked though, there's no signal. So I guess all I can do is just enjoy mother nature. Riding down to the lake. Pangong Lake is 135 kilometers in length, of which 30% is in India and the remaining section in Tibetan China. At an altitude of 4,350 meters, it is one of the highest lakes in the world. The lake usually has several different shades of blue and it was one of the most beautiful places I have ever seen. is quite an amazing experience when you're the only one here. The isolation and solitude really made me feel very calm. As night fell and the moon was rising up, the stars that made up the Milky Way could be seen vividly thanks to there being no light pollution in the area. Good morning. 
that's the place to stay the night. Time to head back to Lay. The following day I explored the shores of Pangong Lake and captured shots of all possible angles. It was time to head back to Lei, and there wasn't much time left in the day. On the way back I captured some more drone footage, but sadly I made a very bad mistake. Yes, yeah, so I was just flying my drone and trying to get some nice footage of that um, glacial lake you know, with all the snow and stuff mixed into the lake, frozen water. And um, I forgot that if my drone hits 30% battery remaining, it starts like landing on the spot. And all I can do is go like left or right, but it, it'll keep descending. So I quickly try to go right towards the road and then I just crash like over there. Luckily, my drone still works. I'm really surprised. That's the second time I've crashed this drone and it still works. Oh, fucking hell. That's slippery, man. So I was riding past, and yesterday, this was just pure water. And today, it looks like it's like almost completely frozen, man. Wow. Oh, solid ice. Today. On the way back, I once again diverted and went on a more extreme route consisting of off-road trails and mountain climbs. The exhilarating ride took me through a very lonely village where I met a few friendly villagers who were captivated by my drone. Okay. 
the lonely village had a huge golden Buddha statue built by the Indian military, which is something that you will commonly see in villages outside of Leh. Later that evening I reached Leh and got some much needed sleep. The upcoming adventure was going to be one of the toughest. Good morning. So I just woke up and I look like shit, but I don't care. Today I'm heading to the world's highest road. Check out the weather. Four minus 14 degrees. Should be fun. Good morning guys. Today I'm heading to the world's highest road. How could there be any other better way to use this motorcycle than go on the highest road in the world? These motorcyclists that I passed, I had only seen once. They were ill prepared and must have headed back to Leh. It was a lonely ride to the top of the highest motorable pass in the world, but I met one fellow traveller. Hey man, where are you heading? Hello brother. How are you? I'm fine, what about you? Good man, I couldn't be better. We rode the last kilometre to the highest road in the world together and it felt great to have at least one fellow traveller with me. That cool guy from Punjab is behind me. He's, he's been solo riding up around here as well. So it's good to meet another solo motorcycle rider. Anyway, won't be staying here long because you saw the sign and it's kind of hard to breathe up here. So I'll be getting out of here and continuing the journey to Nubra Valley. We had a race to the top. Yeah. Me and this guy. I won the gold medal, see? <laughs> gold medal. I got silver and that is in my bag. <laughs> and he got the silver one, but he's too embarrassed to wear it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye bro. Ride, bye. ride safe. Okie dokie. So now I'm on the other side of Kadungla Top, the world's highest road. Now descending. The only other kind of vehicle you'll find here at this time of year are trucks. And this was the theme from the southern side of Kadungla until I reached Nubra Valley. It was a constant battle with trucks. The narrow mountainside roads combined with huge trucks were a potentially deadly mix. Oh. High altitude and the bumpy roads wore me out. My body was sore and I was losing focus while riding. 
At one point, I was approaching a truck and I lost traction. So be careful. Gotta be careful. I almost fell. Slipped. Right in front of that fucking truck. Wow. Fucking hell. I hate doing ride by shots. Especially at this high altitude. I can't even fucking breathe. <sighs> See? I'm not exaggerating. I'm freaking struggling. Ooh, yeah. I'm almost at the bottom now. Seeing the first restaurant was exciting. It was time to have my first meal of the day. Yeah, so I'm just at North Polunia, which is after Kadungla on Nubra Valley side. And I'm just going to get some Maggie noodles from this restaurant here which is the place that I ate last time and something that you'll find interesting is you can get all sorts of um, veg lunch you know veg maggie or veg fried rice so just looking at that I'm extremely hungry and time to feed myself yeah, maggie noodles. Those were probably the tastiest Maggie noodles I have ever eaten. And that's the end of Kadungla! That's the end of Kadungla! And that was the end of Kadungla! Although the road had now become tarmac, the blind corners and white trucks made it difficult to safely negotiate corners. The trucks seemed massive on the road. When seen from above, the trucks look like toys among this epic mountainous landscape. The highest mountains in the world, the Himalayan mountains. And here I was, riding my tiny motorcycle across it, from one side to the other side, slowly but surely clocking kilometres. Such an epic journey. I couldn't help but scream like an excited child once I had seen Nubra Valley. reached Nubra Valley. Right behind me is a road that leads to Diskit, where that huge monastery is, that huge Buddha statue. The one that I spent two or three hours last time taking photos of to get a six second clip. Hope you guys appreciated that one. I won't be doing that this time because I got the drone and I'll just be taking some drone shots instead. Okie dokie. So I've made it to Diskit. I'm at my um, guest house right now, very lovely guest house. It's got Wi-Fi, internet, it's got a TV. You know, I'm loving life. I didn't think I'd get such luxury out in the middle of nowhere, but I am. And it's only gonna cost me up to about a thousand rupees per night. That's 20 bucks. So you're loving it. I use the luxury of having Wi-Fi after a while of not having it to contact my family and friends. It felt good to use something that we usually take for granted, but in such a beautiful place, who cares about Wi-Fi? I 
Okay, so it's my second day here in Nubra Valley. I stayed the night in a place called Zambala Guest House. It cost me about a thousand rupees and that was including breakfast and dinner. Let's have a look around at the room. It's pretty good. The next day after fueling up, I headed back to Leh once again. On the way back, I explored Nubra Valley. From the reflective waters and sand dunes to the incredible Buddhist monuments surrounding it on the mountain edges. So I just pulled over at the side of the road to change my GoPro battery and I'm just looking around at this vast valley and I'm like, wow, how amazing is this? And then I'm looking at these beautiful rocks and I'm like, wow, how amazing is that? And I look down and there's all these bottles of like water and all this rubbish everywhere. And I thought, if any of my viewers are the kind of people that love going to beautiful places like this and throwing rubbish everywhere you just killed a, an awesome moment for me such a beautiful moment that I was appreciating nature and then I just see all this shit on the ground so please if you're one of the people that love leaving your junk and your waste among such beautiful places do not come here I'm serious because it's not hard to just throw your rubbish in a bag like that. Not very hard at all. It was time to climb back up to Kadungla, the highest motorable pass as it's called. Time was running low so I had to rush back before it got too dark. I did not want to be caught in a snowstorm on the same road like I was months before. side of the world's highest road and basically concluding my trip here it is my second last day and tomorrow will be my last day with the Royal Enfield Himalayan which has served me well this motorcycle has served me well but anyway I'm not going to record anymore for today my GoPro battery has died and I can't be bothered getting my DSLR camera out every five minutes so It was saddening that I had only one day left before I had to catch my flight back to Australia. The dark truly captured my heart. 
the environment, the mountains, the rivers, the people, the animals, and the coffee all left an amazing impression on me. I had dreamt of riding through Ladakh two years earlier. As those dreams became more intense, the opportunity came to me. Just like anything in life, if you dream about it enough and work towards it, it will happen. As I spent the final day riding around Lei and taking in all of the sights and sounds, I made a promise to myself. I will never abandon motorcycle riding. I'll never abandon motorcycle adventuring and I'll never abandon the mountains. And where can I find the most epic mountains? None other than the incredible India. Although this was the second time I've been here, it definitely won't be the last. I'll be back soon enough.